Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be talking about Nocardia Asteroides. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. You know, might be thinking we were about to talk about Nocardia Asteroides, but you've written actinomycetes there. Okay, let me explain that to you. Actinomycetes are a family of bacteria that form long branching filaments and these filaments resemble the hyphae of fungi. And you know what? Nocardia asteroides belongs to that family. Members of that family are gram positive, which means that the members of that family stains purple on gram staining, but some of the members of that family are acid fast bacteria. As in this picture, you can see from left to right, this one is Nocardia asteroides with its smooth pinkish colored colonies. And these colonies are formed in a test tube, right? And these two are the colonies of other members of actinomite seeds. But prior to talking about Nocardia asteroides in detail, let me tell you about the bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes or sheets in some places, also on the basis of acid fast into acid fast bacteria, and there's an exception that is mycoplasma bacteria. Bacteria are also classified on the basis of gram staining into gram negative and gram positive. We are not concerned here with gram negative, so I'll skip its classification. Let's talk about gram positive. Gram positive are further subdivided into cocci and rods. And rods are further classified into non spore forming, which are further divided into filamentous that include Gardnerella vaginalis, Nocardia and actinomyces and non-filamentous that includes Corynebacterium diphtheriae and Listeria monocytogenes and also into spore forming rods like aerobic for example bacillus and anaerobic for example clostridium. I do have videos on these bacteria if you want to know more about them please watch those videos. Actinomyces israeli and Nocardia asteroides are the members of family Actinomyces. Lecture outline as we are done with the introduction and classification, now we'll be talking about the introduction of Nocardia, the genus, and Nocardia asteroides, the actual bacterium. And then we'll be looking at its morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we will review the lecture. Nocardia. It's a genus, and the members of that genus are gram-positive, which means that they stain purple on gram staining. Members of that genus are catalase-positive. For those of you guys who do not know what is catalase, let me tell you. Catalase is an enzyme that is released by certain bacteria, and that enzyme does what? Well. It converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And oxygen is possible for forming bubbles. If you perform that test in a test tube, you'll see bubbles in that. And if you perform that test on a microscopic slide, you'll see bubbles on that slide. So if you see bubbles, then that test is positive and we'll say that this bacterium is catalase positive. And if you don't see bubbles, then we'll say that this test is negative and this bacterium is catalase negative. Nocardia are weakly acid fast bacteria. They are filamentous bacillus. Bacillus means rod shaped bacteria. And filaments means they form filaments they are kind of like beads in a thread the long rectangular kind of beads and nocardia contains a total of 85 species some of them are non-pathogenic and some of them are pathogenic like nocardia asteroides nocardia asteroides is weakly gram positive and is also weakly acid fast it is urease positive it is catalase positive it is a rope and it is responsible for causing nocardiosis there there are three types of nocardiosis. We are going to look at them in the pathogenesis section. As in this picture, you can see Nocardia asteroides. This is thin bacillus bacterium morphology. Nocardia asteroides is rod shaped bacterium. It forms beaded branching filaments just like that and it is thin. It varies in size from 1 to 2 micrometers. It stains red with acid fast stain and purple with gram stain. Structure This bacterium has got 
a medium-sized mycolic acid in its cell wall. Okay, here comes the talk of acid-fast bacteria. Acid-fast bacteria usually have mycolic acid in their cell walls. Those who are strictly acid-fast will have large-sized mycolic acid in their cell wall, and those who are weakly have medium-sized mycolic acid in their cell walls. Nocardia steroides is poorly encapsulated. It is not responsible for forming spores. It is not motile. It forms branching filament, just like that. As you can see in this picture on right side, it is rod shaped and is thin. And in the picture on the left side, you can see, let me zoom in. These are the filaments, just like that. It looks like beads in a string. Habitate. Nocardia species are found in the environment, particularly in the soil. And humans are its hosts because it is responsible for causing infection in humans. Transmission. Transmission occurs via inhalation of bacteria. Because bacteria are present in soil and when individuals will inhale that bacteria, they will definitely get the infection. It can be transmitted via direct inoculation or traumatic introduction through openings in epithelial barriers. There's a risk factor that is associated with nocardiosis. When an immunocompromised individual gets in contact with the soil having nocardia steroides, that individual will definitely get infected with nocardiosis. Pathogenesis. Nocardia steroides first causes infection in skin or lungs. Then it spreads to various organs, notably brain. Here we can term it as a disseminated infection. And the infection in lungs has the higher potential to spread. And when the infection is spread, then we can call it a metastatic infection. In metastatic infection, more than two sites are involved. Nocardia causes three types of nocardiosis, as I mentioned earlier. The first one is going to be pulmonary nocardiosis. This is related to the infection of the lungs. The second one is cutaneous nocardiosis. This is related to the infection in or on the skin. The third one is when the first two spread or disseminate in different parts of body, notably brain, is termed as disseminated or CNS nocardiosis. Pulmonary nocardiosis is the most common one and it occurs in immunocompromised individuals and it resembles the pneumonia. Why? Because pneumonia and pulmonary nocardiosis both attack the lungs. Both will have same signs and symptoms. And you know what? Pulmonary nocardiosis is often mistaken for TB, the tuberculosis. The reason is that the multifocal nodules or cavitations of TB resembles the pulmonary nocardiosis. But there's a difference of other signs and symptoms, right? And pulmonary nocardiosis has the potential to become disseminated. It is also called bronchopulmonary nocardiosis in some places. Cutaneous nocardiosis. When the nocardia steroides gets into human body via direct inoculation into an open wound or a pre-existing injury, it will cause certain things like it will cause cellulitis there. There will be local swelling and other signs of inflammation. There will be enlarged or painful lymph nodes typically in lower extremities and it will form its lymphocutaneous form or pyogenic mycetoma form. And it's also called as lymphocutaneous nocardiosis in some places. Disseminated nocardiosis, it's the most severe form of nocardiosis. It occurs whenever pulmonary or cutaneous spreads or disseminate to other body parts, notably brain. And this disseminated nocardiosis involves more than two sites. Like how? Let me tell you. If it occurred first in lungs, it will spread to brain and other parts. Then it got lungs brain and other parts like more than two sites. Same goes for cutaneous. After spreading, it will form metastatic abscesses in brain or lower extremities. In brain, along with these masses, there will be other symptoms like seizures and ring-enhancing lesions will also be formed in brain. Clinical findings. Pulmonary nocardiosis will present inflammatory bronchial mass. It will have symptoms that resemble pneumonia like fever, productive cough, dyspnea, and chest pain. Pulmonary nocardiosis is complicated by cavitation, abscess formation, pleural effusion, empyema, definitely. One of the severe complications is the disseminated nocardiosis. Cutaneous nocardiosis presents 
skin abscesses on hands or chest, fever, there will be bumps on or below the skin surface and they might be filled with a fluid or pus. Disseminated OCNS nocardiosis, they will present nodules in the brain and ring enhancing lesions. Okay, let me sum up all the signs and symptoms of nocardia asteroides there. Nocardia asteroides shows signs and symptoms similar to pneumonia. There will be lung abscess and nodule. There will be empyema, brain abscess and bumps on or below the skin. There are certain other species in Nocardia genus like Nocardia brusillensis and it is possible for causing skin infections and mycetoma. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples of respiratory excretions to diagnose the pulmonary nocardiosis. We'll definitely need skin samples like skin biopsy samples of skin scrapings and stuff like that to diagnose the cutaneous nocardiosis. And we'll also need aspirates from abscesses to look for the brain abscesses caused by nocardia asteroides. And then we'll go for staining. On gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram positive but it may appear gram-negative because it's weakly gram-positive, right? And on acid-fast staining, this bacterium is weakly acid-fast. The staining process of acid-fast uses a weaker solution of hydrochloric acid to decolorize the bacteria. But Nocardia asteroides resists the decolorization with weak acid solutions. On microscopy, we'll find the shape like Nocardia steroides is rod-shaped and it forms branching filaments. It varies in size from 1 to 2 micrometers. Nocardia steroides is purple due to gram staining and red due to acid fast stain. As you can see in this picture, Nocardia steroides forming filaments and Nocardia steroides is thin bacillus. Culture the colonies of Nocardia asteroides are formed on bacteriologic media. Their growth will be aerobic. This land culture containing a Lowenstein Jensen agar growth medium that demonstrate the colonial morphology of the Nocardia asteroides. And the colonies are smooth and these organisms produce a mold-like colonies just like this one. These colonies are smooth and are mold-like and they exhibit a pinkish coloration and they grow slowly on non-selective culture media. We'll also go for radiology to find out the cavitations and lesions in brain and lungs, right? We'll go for CT scan and x-ray. Treatment. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is used for treating nocardiosis. We'll also go for surgical drainage of the abscesses. Prevention. There is no vaccine or prophylactic drug available that can prevent the occurrence of nocardiosis. Alright guys, let's review everything in this short table. The organism we discussed today is Nocardia asteroides. It is responsible for causing nocardiosis, having three times the pulmonary, cutaneous and disseminated, which is also called CNS nocardiosis. It is transmitted via inhalation, inoculation and trauma. Habitat. It is found in environment, particularly in soil and human beings are its hosts because it causes infection in them. Its diagnosis is based on gram staining, acid fast stain, microscopy, culture and also radiology. It is treated with trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole and surgical drainage is necessary to drain all the abscesses. But how to memorize all that stuff? I've got a really cool mnemonic for that purpose. As M comes after N, so we have mnemonic with M's mycolic acid. That reminds us that this bacterium is acid fast because acid fast bacteria have mycolic acid in them. Mycolic has the word myco in its beginning and that resembles mycology which is the study of fungus. So this bacterium resembles the hyphae of fungi and also it causes mycetoma. It forms branching filaments and these filaments resemble the hyphae of fungi that I mentioned earlier. And it is treated with trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And also, if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamualaikum.